Hey, so I'm taking a, a book out of, or a page out of Amazon's book, and I am selling books. <laughs> I thought about that before I said it, and then when I said it, I messed it up. And that's what's funny about it. Nothing else. Anyway, <laughs> I got all a lot of books, and... They are almost all first editions, and um, I'm blessed to have them. They're all kind of modern. Like this one is like a 2009, whatever. It doesn't mean anything to anybody. It's a 2009 Michael uh, Connolly Dragons from number nine, or number nine, whatever, I haven't read it, it's in mint condition, um, and I have a box of them, and then I have a basement of boxes, essentially, um, not literally, but, you know, I probably have a good ten of those boxes, and, you know, a fair amount of books to sell. Um, I do want to read some of them. I should. I gotta be careful. Um, I should really hold on to them. Um, the, the true value of a hardcover first edition that's meant is if you have the opportunity to get the author's signature, then, you know, oftentimes you can make a, a fair amount of money. Um, but selling just the hardcover first editions is like, you know, I'll probably get on eBay after the sales and all that, the 10% the they take or the 15% they take and all the financing fees, I'll probably get like the listed price, you know, the recommended retail price listed on the book, even though it's a first edition, um, because they're not signed and there's not that many book collectors out there. Although in a world where physical assets are paramount there are people who look for collectibles like this just to get them signed because of that there's actually companies that do that um you know memorabilia collectible companies i'm not sure how aggressive those um companies are right now what they're buying I, I doubt they are very um and certainly uh they would be more apt to to pick up the way that i picked up which was obviously in bulk um because you know i didn't pay anything i was they were free there was there was no charge if you take what you can carry type situation and um <clears throat> it was a uh, you know it was a nice gentleman and yeah he was a librarian for uh, a freemason lodge and as a hobby he collected first edition books and that was just his thing and he wanted to be like he wanted to have like the perfect book collection and um, it was, uh, I, his basement was full, full of books. I filled an entire work van. Um, but that's, you know, besides what my tools were filling up, but, um, yeah. So the way that I look at it is I can take probably all things else aside, like a solid month-long vacation just selling books <laughs> and i'd be doing myself like a service when it comes time to move or 
or something like that because it is the most illiquid asset on the planet <laughs> and the only way you are going to recapture anything except a herniated disc is by liquidating them one at a time on eBay to potential collectors or memorabilia companies looking for long-term investments, which an unsigned first edition certainly qualifies for, oh, depending on the author and book title. Um, and I'm not sure if any of these qualify. This was this particular gentleman's taste. Uh, it's a lot of this Michael Connolly fellow. Um, there are others. He seems to be really into like modern mysteries and that sort of stuff. Um, so I have started to read some of them and he was like, you have to, you have to read them. You have to read them. And I feel bad that I haven't read them all. Um, but you know, somebody should enjoy them and there's a lot of them. So even if I read a book a, a week, it would take me a, a long time to read all these books. And I read maybe a book a year. <laughs> I hate to be honest about that. But, um, you know, I'm the s s sad average American watching TV and playing video games most of the time when I'm not working. So actually settling down and reading a book probably hasn't happened for over a year and yeah the last time it was like when I'm hemmed up or you know I'll read four or five books if I have to but to sit down recreationally with all the other options available you know it's been a few years and um even back when I did it was when I was really into Buddhism and I was reading a lot of Buddhist books so it's been a while, but um, that's what I'm doing. I'm taking a little vacation. I'm going to sell off this book collection, um, which is a very heavy commodity that is not going to sell locally. I'm not going to be able to take it to a pawn shop. I'm not going to be able to. It, the only place you can sell it is in a global marketplace like eBay. So having that marketplace available to me along with relatively easy shipping might not be a reality in a year. There's a lot of stuff going on with tornadoes. There's a lot of stuff going on with train derailments. There's a lot of stuff going on with international conflicts. There's just basically too much stuff to go going on to keep track of. And the permanence of any of these kind of norms, like being able to ship something in two days to California, um, is, is not promised. So I'm looking at the kind of big picture of it and saying, okay, it's meant to be. I have a little bit of time on my hands. I have some assets that nobody else is going to care enough to even sell or to go through or to look at. They're probably going to sell for 20 to $30 a piece, I'm guessing. I might get 40 I doubt it. I bet I won't get offers. If I put a $20 minimum, I might get offers, I bet, on half of them. You know what I mean? And bid up on... A, a small percentage, but